What does Isaiah Simmons, the newest member of the New York Giants, bring to the defense? Why didn't it work out in Arizona? We've got all that and more as we hear from Alex Clancy, host of Locked On Cardinals, in this special edition of the Locked On Giants podcast coming your way next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to a special mini edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. I'm Patricia Chena, P-Train with you. And uh, as promised, I have with me on today's mini edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, Alex Clancy. He is the host of Locked On Cardinals, and Alex is going to give us a lowdown on Isaiah Simmons, the Giants acquisition via trade. Alex, first off, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. You got it, Pat. Appreciate you, my friend. Alex, I got to start off with the obvious question here. Why did the Cardinals make this trade? New coaching regime. I mean, why did they just give up on this guy? You know, I feel like new new regime in place, Monty Osford, Jonathan Gannon, if this player is not a cog for the future, why wait? And I feel like that's kind of the, the situation in place. And giving up on him so soon is a lifetime achievement award for Isaiah Simmons and the Arizona Cardinals. You know, like when he was drafted eight overall, I was – it's one of those things where it's like your parents offer you ice cream for breakfast when you know you should be having, you know, toast with avocado on it. The Cardinals should have drafted Tristan Wirfs. They drafted Isaiah Simmons instead who had this standout year at Clemson when they were playing – you know, bad teams in the ACC at that point. And he came in and they just never really found a fit for him. His skill set is incredible. The built in a lab dictionary definition is Isaiah Simmons in the dictionary, but they just could not find a spot for him where he could thrive. And I think that led to the inevitable trade for him yesterday. What were some of the things they were trying with him down there in the desert? What's what positions and just, you know, was it just a matter of not being a fit? Was it the scheme? What, What do you think went wrong? Yeah, it was, it was a little bit of everything. So Steve kind of drafted him and, and automatically moved him to inside linebacker, a position he never played before. So that's strike one. Uh, Vance Joseph put him out there, first play or second play. It was the first series in his rookie year against the 49ers. Kyle Shanahan just come over. It was a Raheem Mostert, uh, Raheem Mostert route run, catch and run 75 yards right past Isaiah Simmons for a touchdown. That was Isaiah Simmons' introduction to the NFL. And it hasn't really gotten a lot better. Like his, I say this about Cliff Kingsbury, he put together a great movie trailer, Isaiah Simmons did, but the movie wasn't always so great. Now, having said that, I think it was just scheme. They moved him inside. They obviously put him with the DBs this year as kind of a rover in the middle of in the middle of the defense or what it was supposed to be if he were to play in regular season games. I don't know why it didn't work, but it didn't. And it's kind of um I think the Cardinals fans have kind of dealt with is like a player goes somewhere else and thrives where he couldn't thrive in the desert. How was, how was uh, Isaiah's demeanor, his attitude through all this? I mean, I know some card fans have weighed in and said, Oh, you know, he became a problem, but I would think that was a result of frustration more than anything. If that is indeed true. Yeah. He's not a problem. I mean, Isaiah Simmons is a good kid, good young man. Sorry, I say kid like everybody's younger than me. So it's like, you know, he's a good young man. He's got a great head on his shoulders, smart guy, good locker room guy, no problem. So the one thing, the flashbulb memory that people are going to remember, which is really unfair for him, is the last preseason game, he got beat bad um, on a crossing route in the middle of the field for a touchdown. And then the next series or a couple of series after, he didn't lay a hit at the goal line on a backup quarterback in a preseason game, I do not fault him one iota. Why would you give up an unnecessary hit in a game that doesn't matter? He got there. That was the point. He let him walk into the end zone. If you would have hit him and one of those guys would have gotten hurt, it like, it's the preseason. Why lay down a hit? Giants fans will love his big hit ability. That is one thing that Isaiah Simmons has in his bag. He, he sent Cam Newton flying his rookie year. Got called 15-yard penalty that ended up costing them the game, but – Isaiah Simmons, goal line stop on Derrick Henry. Goal line stop on Trey Lance, who was running full speed two years ago that ended up giving the Cardinals the win. Like, 
Isaiah Simmons' skill set is something that in the right system and as one cog of a bigger machine could thrive. And I, I think the Giants are a great spot for him. All right. So knowing what you know about Wink, who you had a very interesting nickname for him, <laughs> and you do have my permission to use it if you want no, no. to. Or something. No, no. <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll just leave it between us. Everybody's going to be like, okay, what did Clancy call him? <laughs> but uh, knowing what you know about Wink Martindale's very aggressive defense, how he likes to send guys after the quarterback and whatnot, what's the ideal role, do you think, for Isaiah Simmons in that Giants defense? The quarterback, hit quarterback. I mean, that's it. Go. Even if it's situational, even if he's a third down pass rusher to start, like Wink Martindale is a mad scientist. Everybody knows that. Okay. And with the skill position players they have already fitting Isaiah Simmons in and making his role very simple. C quarterback, sub 4 four forty two forty five six three. I know he's not a traditional edge rusher size. He's faster than many of them. And he just needs to be taught the right way. He needs to be taught how to excel at an NFL level every time he's on the field. And once he learns that path, and I know this is year four, it does. It takes people a while sometimes. It takes the right coaching. It takes the right ecosystem. Isaiah Simmons could be an absolute terror in the NFL. Like I was thinking right when he got traded, I'm like, I wonder what the odds are for most improved player if Isaiah Simmons is on that list. Because in the right system with the right role, he could thrive and be an absolute fan favorite because he hits people really hard, Pat. He hits people really hard. And certainly with the Giants, he would have consistent coaching. You know, down in Arizona, it's just kind of flipped so many times, mm -hmm. you know, and that that's obviously hurts a young player's development. I don't think a lot of people realize that when you have different coaches coming in and they want things done a different way or they see you as a different type of player and whatnot. Alex, I want to ask you about one aspect about um, – Isaiah's skill set, and that's his ability to play the slot. I noticed he's had significant uh, snaps in the slot over his career. How good is he in that role, and what advantage does he bring? It's difficult, you know, because he's not great in coverage a lot of times. You know, he gets burned. It's one cut by a fast player, and he's caught in the dust. So they need to figure out if that's something you just kind of want to move away from him, move that spot away from because – if you look at snap counts and positions he's played, it's kind of been dart throws in Arizona. It's not like a, this is the elixir to get the most out of Isaiah Simmons. We haven't seen the most out of Isaiah Simmons. We haven't seen his peak, you know, and that's the thing. So, like, he's played in the slot, okay? He's played inside. He's rushed the quarterback a little bit. And one of our dear friends, Trevor Sikama, usually used to be part of the program now, Pro Football Focus, put out this thing where it's like, this percentage where his win rate as a pass rusher, situational pass rusher, is higher than any other position he's played. So Wink Martindale knows this. And I feel like moving him in that arena and keeping it simple is where he's going to thrive the most. I just think that looking at where he's played with the Cardinals needs to kind of be whited out, you know, just on, on the actual paper, be like, you know what? They just drafted Isaiah Simmons. Let's go from there and not look at what he's done up until this point as a precursor for what should happen from here on out. There's been talk that Simmons might be a good fit for like that Tony Jefferson role that Wink had in Baltimore, you know, a hybrid safety slash linebacker type of role, a role that he tried to recreate with the Giants last year with Jefferson and also with Landon Collins. But there's also been word out of Arizona that Simmons basically went to the coaching staff and said, hey, I don't want to play safety. I think that was the, the report. Um, was that out of frustration? And do you think that Tony Jefferson hybrid role would be a good fit for Isaiah Simmons's skill set in this defense? Yeah, I mean, I love it. He's he's the perfect body. Like his comp was Derwin James, his comp was a bunch of others. All those guys have gone a lot further in their NFL career went healthy than Isaiah Simmons has. So 6'3, that's big. I mean, 245 is big, but the 40 time is there. So that's why it's kind of a mind screw where it's like he could play that role. He could, but when it comes to like, look, look at what's happened with Jamal Adams. He's been a fish out of water in Seattle. You know, he couldn't stay healthy, but he wasn't great in coverage. Isaiah Simmons isn't great in coverage. I think what they need to do is kind of just put him in a couple different spots and figure out where Wing can maximize him the most. And if it turns into that Tony Jefferson role, I mean, that's what they tried to do with Dale Buchanan starting in Arizona. And he ended up with a cup of coffee with the Giants, right? Like mm -hmm. it's there's so many players who – sputtered out 
trying to fill that role that Tony Jefferson did for so long, Landon Collins, as you mentioned, and then guys are trying to accrue time doing that as well with, with Derwin James, et cetera. They need to figure out what they have first and then find a spot for him, as opposed to having a spot for him and having him fill that role, hopefully, with his skill set. And then final question for you, Alex, what else do Giant fans need to know about Simmons, the type of player he is, the type of person he is? What 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 can you what else can you tell us about him? He's not going to be a deterrent in the locker room. That's one good thing. He's a sweet young man who is really good at football and he's just been kind of a fish out of water at this point. And all it's going to take is a third and short or third and goal watching him power through the line or see a bootleg coming from a quarterback and meet him at the goal line and stopping him an inch short from a touchdown for everybody in big G-man land to buy an Isaiah Simmons jersey. It's going to happen. He's going to have a massive hit that's going to be on the top 10. You're going to be like, holy crap, how did the Cardinals not figure out a spot for him? This is just something we've witnessed so many times before in the desert. Hassan Reddick first, Isaiah Simmons is most likely going to be second. All right. It sounds promising. I know it's a big trade and for a seventh rounder, no less. I mean, gosh, you, you can't buy that anywhere. I mean, cons considering the trade off, where are you going to get a seventh rounder with, with that type of skill set that Isaiah Simmons has? Alex, appreciate the time. Thank you so much for all the intel on Isaiah Simmons. Can't wait to, to meet him when he gets here to New York. I think he's on his way as we speak. As we record this, Giant fans, thank you for tuning into this special edition of Locked On Giants podcast. Keep it here all weekend long. We've got shows for Saturday, Sunday, and then, of course, we're going into Monday through Friday as we continue to bring you nonstop coverage of your New York Giants. I'm Patricia Trena. He's Alex Clancy. We'll see you tomorrow, Giant fans.